Thank you, Samuel. Doing good. All right, so I've just turned the recording on, and we're going to take a moment to pray, and then we will get started. Um, anybody uh, who'd like to lead us in prayer, maybe Tarun, wouldn't you, if it's okay, wouldn't you pray sure. with us? Yes. Father, thank you. Thank you for this uh, uh, day that you've blessed us with where we could come together and learn. Father, we pray that um, let it be your wisdom that guides us and let it be your spirit that surrounds us and helps us to grow uh, more nearer to you as we come together and read through your word and l listen from you, Lord. Father, we pray. Uh, that you bless us with that open mind uh, to receive the things the way that you have uh, uh, you, you have kept for us to be learned, Father. We thank you for your goodness on our lives. Uh, we pray uh, that uh, you anoint uh, Pastor uh, to be that channel and speak through him, Lord. We thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good. So, you know, uh, we just have a month and a half left in the semester. Uh, I need to, we need to write, <clears throat> create your exams and assessments and uh, put that out. So I have to work on it and um, we will get that done. And uh, so we're kind of, uh, you know, getting ready to touch on several things that we wanted to cover in this course. Um, to, so today, the plan for today is we want to talk about sharing Christ with a Hindu, sharing Christ with a Muslim, just giving us, um, you know, I'm not getting into studying Hinduism or studying Islam. That's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to keep, give us a little framework, keep a little, uh, the key points that we need to uh, highlight when we are talking to somebody uh, from a Hindu faith or somebody from uh, from, uh, from from the Muslim faith, you know what what would be the main points that we should present uh, to them about the person of Christ? We have spoken about the uniqueness of Christ. We have spoken about the resurrection of Christ. Uh, we have talked about salvation only in Christ, which we did last week. So now we want to talk about okay, how do I share Christ with these two? Uh, these two people of these two backgrounds. Now, um, we do want to, at some point, um, you know, address I'm, the reason I'm looking at Hinduism and Islam is because they are the two major uh, religions outside of Christianity. Uh, so we are addressing them. But um, if we have time later on, we'll touch a little bit on, uh, you know, the other religions like Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, uh, and also maybe some of the cults that are there. Uh, we will see if we have time for that. But what we want to do is we want to address these two. And then I want to jump into uh, another subject that is challenging for many of us, and especially in the light of what we've been through the globally uh, the last year and this year, the, the pandemic. Uh, we want to talk about the issue of suffering right now and uh, you know why is there suffering why is there all these things uh, and uh, well, why is there suffering right uh, so we will talk about that uh, and, and so I'm kind of just rearranging um, material a little bit uh, so that I can cover these things and then if you have time we can do things of uh, maybe of lesser importance um, Anita, I see a comment there. Hinduism major is in India or only or any other countries also. So, so Hinduism in, in, in many ways is global uh, simply because Indians have gone all over the world, uh, uh, similar in some sense to Islam. Uh, when you think of Islam, you think, okay, you think of the Middle East, but actually, uh, you know, Indonesia is, is not in the Middle East, it's in the Far East, but it's a major uh, Muslim country. And so in that sense, you know, Muslims have also uh, spread around the world. So uh, Hinduism no longer is, uh, uh, while the majority of Hindus live in India, uh, Hinduism is no longer considered just part of India. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And um, yeah. So uh, 
uh, so that's why we're looking at these two main religions. So the plan is talk about these religions, then talk about suffering. Uh, we'll see how much we cover. Then after that, I want to talk about social issues. Uh, how do we respond to social issues? Like, uh, you know, uh, there's this big issue of, uh, 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 the, the, you know, homosexuality and 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 gay and th th that whole s space, abortion, divorce, climate change, um, genetic research. Uh, so these are all social issues. We want to touch on those things so that we should be able to respond from a biblical perspective when it comes to these things. All right. So that's kind of the plan. And if we finish these, you know, these three main areas, which is responding, sharing Christ with Hindu, Muslim, understanding suffering and having a biblical response to suffering and talking about some socialists, then we will then maybe come back and pick up uh, some other religions and cults. OK, so I'm keeping that intentionally uh, to a later part if we have time because I want to cover some of these uh, probably more important things. And these social issues are becoming more and more important. And the church is getting dragged into these social issues. Uh, whether you like it or not, you know, you're facing it everywhere. You're facing it in the workplace these days. Uh, workplaces want to be inclusive, but then if you are if you are the HR manager, what would you do? You know, uh, how would you handle it? Uh, so we need to have a biblical framework within which we respond to many of these social issues. So that's the plan. Um, let's uh, get into you know sharing Christ with uh, a Hindu, sharing Christ with a Muslim, and uh, then we will get on to uh, the issue of suffering. So, uh, and feel free to ask questions uh, on this as we go along, right? So sharing Christ with a Hindu, just uh, this is a, in a tabular way, trying to highlight some of the key differences or uh, contrasts uh, between the Christian faith and the Hindu faith, right? Now, uh, what do we say about God and, and, and different, different key points, right? So about God, we're talking about an eternal triune God, the Christians, the Hindus have uh, uh, numerous gods and goddesses. And the three main are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Right? Uh, man, about man, we know man is sinful but deeply loved by God. A man is part of God, came out of God, and will eventually go back to God uh, from a Hindu perspective. Scriptures, we have the Bible, we see it as an inspired, infallible book. Uh, similarly, the Hindus have the Vedas, and then they have other books the, uh, that they would quote, the Bhagavad Gita, the Ramayana, the Upanishads, so on. Jesus Christ, we, we see him as God who became man. Uh, from a Hindu perspective, you know, Jesus, you know, you have different kind of responses. Some would readily accept him as, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's maybe one of the incarnations, he's a good person, one of the many gods, uh, and some may just ignore entirely, right? So you've got different response from Hindus. Some may be totally against Jesus Christ. So you've got a mixed response from them. Um, what about life's purpose? We, we say, look, we, you know, our goal is to have a personal relationship with God and live according to God's will. From a Hindu perspective, is uh, uh, there's a huge focus on karma, which is uh, having to do with works and uh, somehow to make sure that your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, just do more good than bad. And there's also the focus emphasis on, on knowledge uh, as a means to eventual enlightenment and devotion to God, which is, you know, being deeply uh, devoted to God. And that's there. Now, uh, just like in Christian, Christian on the Christian side, you, you you'll have people who are committed to this to varying degrees. Right? So it's not like every Hindu is deeply committed to these things. Neither is every Christian deeply committed to these things. But we're just laying these things out in general. Right? Heaven. What do we say? We know that's the place where God lives, and that's where people will go after after they die. 
because of the faith in Christ. Uh, what, what does Hindu faith say? Uh, first of all, Hindu, Hindu faith uh, talks about uh, reincarnation. So that means uh, uh, we are going to keep being born on this earth over and over again. Uh, we are going to be born, we live, we die, and we will be reborn or reincarnated back here uh, depending on how well we did in the previous life. And if we did well, then we will get into a higher life form, a higher state, ultimately uh, re coming into a place where we will be liberated from this uh, cycle of uh, birth, life, and death. So this liberation from this re cycle of reincarnation is salvation, uh, moksha, uh, which is salvation. And eventually the goal is we will be united with the divine, we'll become one with God, or uh, we'll attain nirvana, come into this place of uh, being one with God and in a, in a state of bliss. So the emphasis really is this whole cycle of birth, life, and death, and then coming back, birth, life, and death, coming back. And then eventually you, you live in such a way that you are liberated from this cycle, right? So going to heaven or salvation is understood as a liberation from the cycle of reincarnation. Now, when we talk about the Christian faith, uh, we don't have that concept. Uh, we don't have the concept of reincarnation. We know uh, the Bible says, uh, Hebrews 9 and verse 27, we spoke about it in the mentoring hour. Uh, it is appointed for man once to die, after that the judgment. So ours is a linear thing. You live life on earth, you die, there is a judgment, and then you know, you're going to go to heaven or hell. So, uh, you know, so, so this is it. You have one chance, one life on earth, then heaven or hell. And, uh, and, and salvation is God's gift through Jesus Christ. So it's not an attainment or not an escape that we attain to uh, by our works or by some sort of a spiritual enlightenment, but it's something that we receive through Christ. Right? So that's a big contrast here. And then in terms of hell, this is a place of uh, torment, uh, eternally separated from God, the Bible says. But hell, there's no concept of hell in the sense of being separated from God eternally. But the idea of hell is, is in this whole cycle of reincarnation, that if you, as long as you're trapped in this life, uh, birth, life, and death cycle, that is hell, or that is considered as you know, being away from God, being in hell. Right? So again, a point of contrast. Some other things that uh, we can add, and you know, I, I will go through this, and others who want to share some more thoughts can uh, do that. Right? Some other things when you talk about the Hindu faith or Hinduism uh, is uh, at least to some extent, and it's not that prevalent uh, in, in uh, too much these days, I mean, I, I have to qualify it, that especially in rural India, in towns, and then to some degree in, in urban centers, there's still the underlying caste system. That means people still look at, uh, you know, what caste were you born in, born uh, in uh, on earth. Uh, so, you, you know, you could, if you belong to a lower caste, then you can't marry people from you know, a different caste. That has changed, of course, in the urban centers. So we qualify that. But in some parts, uh, people still hold on to that caste system. And they use that, especially in terms of marriage or other forms of alliances, uh, how you interact with people. Uh, it's kind of the, the caste system kind of you know influences uh, human relationships. Uh, reincarnation, we mentioned that uh, it's this ongoing birth, life, and death cycle. Uh, and then, uh, people have a strong belief in that. Uh, so they look at life from that perspective of uh, reincarnation uh, and uh, 
trying to escape uh, from that through works. Yoga uh, actually refers to uh, discipline or the right kind of spiritual exercises. Right? So when you talk about yoga from a Hindu perspective, it's a set of spiritual exercises and they could be whether these are in the form of knowledge, in the form of devotion, in the form of deeds, or in the form of self-awareness, uh, uh, they're expressed in different ways, right? So, uh, but it's it's all, it's really forms of expressions of spiritual exercises or spiritual disciplines. And that's what yoga is. Karma has to do with your uh, deeds. So what do you do? Oh, do you do good? Do you do bad? And the underlying philosophy is your, 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 your deeds are weighed in a balance and your works, your good deeds have to outweigh your bad deeds. Uh, dharma is an ex expressing goodness to people, uh, being good to people, gracious uh, to people, and so on. And uh, another point that to keep in mind is the idea of avatars, God coming in human form, uh, which is interesting because we also, uh, the Christian faith also talks about uh, incarnation, God coming in human form. The huge difference is that the avatars in, in the Hindu faith are not flawless. That means they do things, uh, Rama or Krishna, or others. Uh, they do, you know, they do wrong things. Uh, they, uh, whereas in the Christian understanding of incarnation, the incarnation is God becoming man, and He's sinless. He is perfect because He's God who became man. Whereas that is not held uh, tightly in uh, avatars. Uh, from in Hinduism, okay? It is God coming as human form, but being com completely human. Now, uh, so that's just a quick overview of uh, the people from the Hindu faith and, and Christian faith. Now, we all understand that, you know, not every Hindu necessarily holds all of these things very tightly. Right? Um, they have these underlying philosophy, but you will have various kinds of uh, people in various positions. Some are very strong and some may be very open-minded. So you've got a wide spectrum of uh, people in Hinduism. And also uh, uh, Hinduism is very open, very, very open, meaning you'll find that there are Hindus who will readily listen to, you know, uh, things about Jesus Christ when they think that, okay, Jesus is just one of the many gods or one of the many good people, one of the many good teachers. So you will have that openness as well uh, from among the Hindus. Okay, I thought I heard a question. Mangi has raised us. Okay, Mangi, you, you have a question? Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Um, you uh, you say that avatar is you, is a, a god coming in in in, in a, one of the gods coming in in the human form. Um, there's a, the ones they call babas, the Indian babas. Can you please are they considered as gods or they are just uh, human who incarnate and they are they are seen as divine. Uh, um, babas, okay, Babas. Um, are they, so what was your question, Mangi? Are they, are they are human they, or are they avatars? Is that what you're Avatars, question? yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, so, so, yeah, so God men or religious men, men and in some cases even women, uh, are, 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 and, and you know, are there, there are a lot of others as well on the on the call who can in the class who can speak to this. Uh, they are, um, you know, highly regarded, highly respected, 
and are in some way a medium to God, you know, through these spiritual leaders, gurus, babas, ma matas, mother, women, well, spiritual leaders. Uh, through them, you're getting to God. And so they're highly respected, highly, you know, treated with a lot of respect by Hindus. Uh, but uh, to my understanding, they're not considered as avatars, not in the same class as, you know, Rama or Krishna, no. They are spiritual leaders. They're very highly respected. And um, uh, they are considered to be in a higher, say a higher spiritual level than the normal human, uh, other humans. But they're not considered as avatars. So, uh, but they're considered as, you know, spiritual people, mediums through whom you can access God and learn God. That was your question, wasn't it? Are they avatars or not? Uh, yes, sir. Because okay. people worship them, and yeah, we have, we've got a large uh, Indian population here in South Africa, and mm. you see their pictures all over. And people worship them, put flowers on them. So I see. Yeah, yeah. So they they highly respected. They are, yeah. Anita says like they're like pastors to Hindus. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't think it depends, right? Yeah, but. See, uh, uh, Christians don't consider pastors as mediums to God. You know, okay, pastors, they will teach us and all of that. But every Christian, every believer can go directly to God and pray. But Hindus do hold these gurus in a much higher place. As like through them, they're accessing God. So they, they you know, almost, yeah, like you said, they worship them as means of worshiping God, right? But in, a, in the Christian faith, we don't worship our pastors or we don't, Put flowers around our pastor's pictures. <laughs> we don't do those things. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's move on. So the main focus is now when I, when you, you and I have a chance to speak to somebody from the Hindu faith, what should we focus on? Right? How do we communicate the uniqueness of Christ with somebody from the Hindu faith. Now, what we um, must keep in mind is, uh, you know, so we, we've, we've kind of, we've outlined or just highlighted some of the main philosophies or uh, uh, perspectives that a typical Hindu will have, okay? So again, uh, I, was, I was just saying that, you know, not everybody holds fast to all of these things, but generally we're saying this is, their perspective of things. So uh, how do we present Christ to them in a way that they can understand and not misunderstand? Uh, what are the points of, you know, possible, what, are the, what are the chances of them misunderstanding Jesus? You know, so when we talk about Jesus, sometimes, uh, like I said, uh, there will be people, Hindus, who readily accept whatever we say about Jesus. Yeah, you know, Yes, Jesus. One of them. I will. I will take a copy of the Bible. I'll put a picture of Jesus next to, you know, the picture of the rest of the gods they have. Uh, so from that sense, they're very welcoming. Uh, they'll be open to prayer. They'll be open to, you know, whatever you, we say from the Bible and so on. But the thing that they cannot, or very find it very difficult to understand and difficult to accept, is when we say Jesus is the only way. Because in their mind, they already have embraced many gods and goddesses, right? So that's like a default way of thinking, which is God has come in many ways, many forms, and there are many expressions of God. And here we are, we want to present the Christ saying, Jesus is God who became man, and he is the only way to salvation. And that is a very difficult point, I'm speaking generally, for somebody from a Hindu philosophy, from a Hindu perspective, to accept. Why should there be only one way? Because by default, the, the, they think, or the, by default they think that there are many ways to God. And God has to be so big. Uh, God is so big so that people can get to him 
through so many different ways and so many different means. That's one point um, of difficulty. The second challenge is for us to deal with this whole issue of salvation by grace. Okay? That means, because for, for the Hindu, by default, how do they think? If I do something wrong, I just have to do two times more good. And I can, I can, you know, I will, I will, my good will outweigh my bad. And I will eventually move up to the point where I can escape the cycle of reincarnation. So the thought process or the pattern of thinking is in terms of works. I am working towards my salvation. And so I just have to do more good and I can do more good maybe later on in life when I'm old or so until then, even if I do evil, you know, I can make up for it. I will, whatever, you know, but the, the default thinking is in terms of works. And here we are presenting the gospel saying it's by grace, God forgives. So that's a challenging point to speak towards when you're speaking to somebody from a Hindu perspective, uh, from the Hindu faith. Right? And deeply rooted in that is the idea of every person is responsible for their own salvation. But here we are coming and saying, God provided salvation through somebody else. Because the Hindu is so connected to works, the Hindu pattern of thinking is so connected to works, it simply says salvation is your responsibility. There's no idea of, hey, it can be given to you as a gift. Somebody else can pay for it and you can benefit. It's your responsibility. In the Christian faith, we are saying, somebody became our substitute, died for us, and uh, we gain from that. We benefit from that. So not only is it not of works and it's of grace, but that grace is given to you because somebody did something for you. Okay, so uh, again, that you know, so we are, we are trying to understand. Look, if if somebody from the Hindu perspective is looking at the Christian faith, these are some of the challenges uh, they're going to deal with or how to think through uh, when they when they are trying to understand what we are saying. Right. So uh, now, ultimately, we know that. It is the Holy Spirit is going to open their eyes and help them understand uh, Jesus. And uh, many times it is an encounter, a divine encounter, a supernatural encounter uh, that is the best, what to say, uh, the best testimony to what we are saying, right? Of course, we can present the gospel the best we can, but it's not easy to, you know, uh, address a, a totally different frame of reference, totally different pattern of thinking. It's not very easy. So the best way is when they encounter God in a powerful way, their lives are changed, okay? But how do we still communicate the gospel to somebody from a Hindu faith, right? So we start off by the basic things we agree, right? We agree, that is the Christian faith, the Hindu faith agrees that there is sin, there is evil, there is wrong. That means there is right and wrong, right? So there is sin, there is evil in the world. And uh, while while Bible is talk, does talk about Satan uh, as a source uh, uh, of, of uh, what has happened, uh, here with the thinking in terms of works and reincarnation, right? Uh, so, even when we talk about sin and evil, there is a little contrast that we need to keep in mind 
uh, the, uh, the, the Hindus thinking in terms of works and it's man doing these things and uh, here we, are, we have this factor of sin and Satan uh, being causes of suffering okay but starting with that point of sin and evil we then uh, okay I, I've talked about the contrast yeah forgiveness and yeah uh, we, we then need to come into this whole space where we talk about relationship with God, right? God is holy, man is sinful. And no matter what we do, we, we cannot reach God. We have to pay for our own sin, right? Even one sin is sufficient to separate us from God. So even if we do many, many, many good works, we still have the sin to pay for, uh, which keeps us away from God. And uh, we talk about God reaching man through the person of Christ. And in a very loving way, we present. So when we talk about Christ, remember in their minds, they're going to talk, think about many avatars. Yeah, they say, yeah, we also had 11 uh, avatars. Uh, but when we present Christ, we need to highlight the fact that this incarnation of God we're talking about is unique, is sinless, is perfect. And he became the sufficient one and only revelation of God. So we are, we are lovingly contrasting Christ and drawing a distinction from between Christ and the Hindu thought of avatars. Okay, because we said... In the Hindu mind, avatars are humans. They make mistakes. They do all kinds of things. But in the Christian faith, the incarnation of God is perfect, is sinless. And there's a reason for that incarnation. And he fulfilled it in his one incarnation. Right? So in a loving way, we contrast that. We don't want to you know, judge or condemn the belief in avatars, but we want to highlight the distinction between Christ and avatars. And then... We talking about a personal relationship with God that the Christian faith brings to us freely by grace because of what Christ did in contrast to this whole process of liberation and enlightenment which comes through our own efforts. Right? So you're drawing a distinction that here is God through Christ, because of what Christ did, giving us a free gift and an open invitation into a personal relationship with Him, which starts here and now, as opposed to something that you're going to keep trying, keep trying to escape uh, from this cycle of uh, reincarnation uh, through your works uh, and eventually try to get one with God. So we contrast that. So look, this is the big difference. God is giving it to us as a free gift. And importantly, he is saying Christ transforms us versus we having to change ourselves. So in Hinduism, the emphasis, like I said, is on your responsibility. It means how do you self-actualize how do you self-realize or self-discipline yourself becoming a better person in the christian faith we are saying jesus changes you he makes us new creation he empowers us to live uh, uh, a better life uh, you know a christ-like life he empowers us as opposed to in hinduism i try to improve myself, whether it's through self-discipline or through self-realization or through some form of enlightenment, right? Again, this is contrast, right? So through this, you know, so if we present the gospel, highlighting, and of course, do this in a loving way, we're not going to do it in a judgmental or condemning way, but our goal is to help them see the difference. Look, there are, stark contrasts between what the Christian faith is presenting to what 
Hinduism is presenting. And these are the differences. So you think about it, you, you, you ponder about it, you, you consider that, right? And what we are saying is very, very logical. When we say God is perfect, well, he has to be, otherwise he can't be God. Yeah, so this incarnation is perfect. He, he was sinless. And he was the, uh, he expressed God to us. He revealed what God would do for us. Yeah, uh, this is in contrast to what they would understand ab uh, about avatars. So we present Christ, present the highlight the differences, and then give them the invitation to make a decision for Jesus. But as we are seeing here, uh, 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 yeah, so, okay, let, let me come to these comments here. So as we're seeing, um, gosh, what was I going to say? Uh, as we're seeing here in India, okay, here, this is what I was, was going to say, is that the thing that impacts the Hindu really powerfully is a demonstration of God's power, supernatural. And in many cases, that is like the clincher or that is like the uh, the point that really convinces them that Jesus is different. When they see the power of Jesus Christ in healing, in miracles, in deliverance. Right? But at the same time, what we're also observing is many times people come to get that blessing of healing or deliverance or a miracle, and then they go away. So. It is therefore our responsibility as we present Christ that we know uh, the healing, the deliverance, the miracle is very important, but we need to explain that this Jesus who did the miracle is very different and he's asking them for a commitment to him and him alone. So we have to emphasize that in a loving way and help them understand the difference. Okay, so uh, I would like, uh, you know, others just to add some thoughts. Uh, you know, I know Tarun can speak to it. Tarun comes from a Hindu background and he's accepted Jesus. And he's, uh, so Tarun, you want to share some of your own personal experience and your thoughts. Uh, and there might be others on the call, uh, uh, you know, if you want to add to this whole, just to help us all, give, give us all a perspective of how best to share Christ uh, with those uh, from a Hindu background. Please feel free to share. Uh, sure, Pastor. I was just trying to relate to what you uh, just said. Uh, when I came to uh, Christ, in fact, uh, it, I experienced that miracle of being healed because I was uh, I had this swine flu on the bed for five days. Doctors couldn't help, and I got healed with one prayer. And my dad and sister were just watching uh, right beside. I accepted Christ, and I understood that He is the only way. But my dad and sister uh, they thought Christ is one other God who can heal like anyone else, like a Baba or someone. So uh, that that line of thought of uniqueness of Christ is something more difficult to present uh, for the Hindus. That is uh, one aspect. And uh, also there are so many types of Hinduism, uh, like the classical ones uh, who uh, read the Vedas and the mythology Upanishads and stuff. But the modern uh, Hinduism is more towards uh, the Babas and the way they interpret uh, uh, different challenges and the way they present, it's their intellect that actually attracts them. Um, so uh, that is one thing. And the major challenge, like if you ask a Hindu, uh, what's wrong with uh, Christianity, why you don't accept, the kind of arguments that they present uh, is, uh, unless we really go to the base of it, it's difficult to uh, understand like the first thing they would say is Christianity is a colonizing religion uh, that's what they believe in and also they say um, Christianity is morally inferior because they eat meat they drink alcohol they are neglecting the extended family uh, they try to live individually live and cleave and uh, so uh, 
they they think it's it's morally inferior to be a christian it's it's more of a backward caste and that's a uh, interesting thought that uh, i encountered when it comes to uh, my family because if you if you take me as a hindu uh, they're proud that they are a forward caste and then you you become a backward caste and things like that uh, that's one uh, thing and uh, they also think christianity uh, christians are betrayers of their culture <laughs> they they leave the entire heritage and uh, uh, try to adopt something which is western so uh, tough challenges uh, to present because uh, that's their thought process but uh, i also had a very very challenging encounter with argument with my uh, sister uh, she thinks that you know uh, if you pray hard enough to a rock uh, god can appear through the rock Uh, you, the, because your prayer is hard enough it's 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 more like uh, uh, name and thinking god will do it this way it, it, it's it's a sense of arrogance that is uh, within which they don't uh, uh, realize <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah but they they have very interesting arguments every time something new and when you are listening to them directly it's it sounds very deceptive but if you ponder a little later ah uh, you know this is <laughs> not mm-hmm. right but uh, very interesting arguments that they come up with mm-hmm. thank you thank you for sharing tarun anybody else um uh, you want to share your experience um in you know maybe your own personal journey of faith coming uh, if you're from a hindu background or um your encounter sharing christ uh with somebody of the hindu faith anyone okay so so like tarun was saying you know uh be uh, uh you know there's a big broad wide spectrum uh, of thinking uh in hinduism uh, it's kind of almost like a a uh, universal religion meaning you can embrace almost anything uh, it's it's like almost like what you make it to be <clears throat> in in your thinking uh but when we speak to them i think uh we should just focus on presenting christ as unique this is who jesus is this is why he's different and let them think about it and let god deal with it so uh, ultimately you know we cannot uh, save them we cannot change them uh, but it's god who has to touch their hearts and open their eyes right and um, uh, and so we uh, we do our best to present jesus in a way that they see jesus as very different from you know all the gods and goddesses and gurus and people that they they revere so we present christ very unique this is why he's different and this is what the christian faith is offering and then uh people you know turn turn to christ uh just in my own experience uh, uh, i've seen that you know uh what sometimes it's just you know you you can't even explain you know and i remember you know, even in during my school days and uh sharing christ with hindus and many of them accepted christ and uh it was not that we had some great arguments but it was just god opening their heart opening their eyes and touching their their touching them inside you know that they came to faith in christ and gave their life to christ and then uh then there are the others who had an encounter who experienced something supernatural a miracle that takes place and they come to faith in Christ and then then there are others who want to think through it logically you know uh, they want to understand they want to see the difference uh and have the questions answered and then eventually make their commitment to Jesus so you have we, we do have a wide spectrum of how they come to faith in Christ uh whether it's you know you see god opening their hearts supernaturally when you see they see a miracle or it's a well thought out uh time 
you know, they think through it and then they come to faith in Christ. So we have all three right? and uh, we, we do our best in presenting Christ uh, the way we should. Okay. Um, I'm going to move now to sharing Christ with uh, uh, the Muslim. Just, just get it started and then let's see. We have, and we have just three minutes more. Okay. Maybe we'll just take a break and then come back to this. Uh, Christopher, you have a question. Maybe we can do that before we go for the break. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Pastor. I actually, um, I mean, just wanted to broadly, uh, you know, ask your uh, your uh, uh, opinion about you know this, um, you know, but talking about uh, speaking about Christ and um, how it sort of you know uh, relates to to uh, you know this uh, this idea of uh, conversion, you know, converting from you know Hindu to uh, to Christian and you know it, it would apply also to our uh, to people from other faiths, the conversion part, and um, um, where would there be some kind of a you know a distinction between the two, uh, even even in a you know one 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 to one uh, scenario or, or uh, you know or or a, a one to uh, a group scenario, and uh, uh, I think it probably have uh, more relevance in in the in the current time. Particularly in India, where you know the Hindu uh, fundamentalist, uh, uh, you know, has uh, this phenomena has you know has has grown stronger. So, uh, in your ex in your experience, and uh, you know, in some of the uh, some of the churches that you are, that you have that APC has, um, what has been some of the experiences around uh, you know this. Uh, uh, you know, speaking about Christ and you know how how it sort of you know gets could be could be construed as you know conversion. Yeah, so yeah. just wanted to get some get some uh, guidance from you on that. Mm -hmm. Sure, you've you've brought up a very important theme. So what we are seeing now prevalent in the mind of Hindus. Uh, and not only in India, but I think this is all over the world, is this whole uh, ill will and uh, ill feeling towards uh, Christians because this whole of whole issue of conversion. So when you start talking to somebody, um, you know, uh, a Hindu uh, about Jesus, the, the, the immediate thing that goes to the mind is, oh, he's trying to convert me and so on. And, uh, you know, you, we're seeing this as keep, uh, this whole mindset escalating. Um, it wasn't there like, you know, maybe 30 years ago when, when you sp stopped and spoke to a Hindu, they would listen up to you, talk to them about Jesus. Today you speak to a Hindu about Jesus and the immediate thing is, oh, he's converting, he's trying to convert me. Uh, and, and it is very prevalent here in India, uh, uh, both in the cities and in rural, uh, you know, in towns and it's kind of getting you even into the villages. Uh, uh, and globally, wherever Hindus are, because this this kind of thing, this thought has spread that uh, when a Christian comes to talk to you, he's trying to convert you. Uh, so I think, uh, so, so now in India, things are getting bad because the laws that, are, that are, people are trying to pass, these are anti-conversion laws. And uh, what the attempt is being made is they're trying to just, you know, open it up so much saying that any form of inducement is a crime, right? So uh, telling somebody about heaven is an, a form of inducement and therefore it is a crime. Uh, telling somebody about, you know, being healed or receiving blessing, uh, any form of blessing uh, can be construed as an inducement and therefore it is a crime. It's just, uh, you know, you're trying to convert somebody. So that's the the law that's trying to you know the people are trying to pass here, and so we have to be all the more careful. Um, so what do we do? What is our response? One is we preach the gospel. We make it very clear that look, you have to make the decision, and it's your decision to follow the person of Christ. 
uh, and uh, to read your Bible. So that freedom every person has, it's an individual choice. Now we're not asking you to quote unquote change your religion. We're just in giving you an invitation to follow the person of Christ and to read his, follow his teachings. So we make it very clear that it's your choice. We're not in, you know, this is what Christ has uh, and uh, it's your choice to do this. So um, it is challenging uh, and uh, you know, where this is going to go as far as politically in India, uh, we don't know. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, there are, have been attacks on the churches uh, in northern part of India and so on. Um, but uh, we, we just have to continue presenting Christ uh, and letting people make the decision. Now, if people make the decision, uh, it's got to be very clear that one, it is their choice to follow Christ. We are not inducing them in any way. Uh, previously, the inducements used to be, oh, if you give them money, or if you give them medical aid, you do some social work, those are considered inducements. Now, talking about heaven, talking about healing, talking about forgiveness of sins are also trying to be classified as inducements. So the best way to respond to that is, look, it's the individual's choice to believe in the person of Christ and to follow Christ. Why they do that, you know, it's their faith in Christ. And if they've received a healing, if a prayer has been answered, uh, if they found meaning, if they found peace, if they found joy, that is their choice. It's their personal experience, and therefore they're making the choice to follow Christ. So we have to leave it at you know uh, the freedom of choice, which cannot be taken away from an individual, no matter what. So we have to reposition that, you know, saying, look, you're not inducing; they are making the choice uh, to follow Christ. Is that okay, Christopher? Uh, I mean, it's not a complete answer, but uh, a few thoughts. Yeah, and maybe just really quick. I mean, this is just, I guess, uh, across the board, not just specifically for EPC Church, but um, has, um, I mean, the 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 success factors are, are of you know um, having uh, you know people of uh, who are not uh, not or uh, not not but being not Christians um, and accepting Jesus has has that gone down over the last term uh, few years or has it has it um, has it has it sort of kind of remained consistent? Um, yeah, my uh, my observation, what's happening in India is it's it's remained consistent. Maybe it's on the increase. That's uh, there are more people coming to Christ, especially even you're seeing what's happening in North India. A lot of people come into Christ. Um, so that's there is a lot of persecution. There is uh, people are not holding back from coming to Christ. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, let's go for our break. I know we're five minutes into our break time. Uh, take 10 minutes um, uh, and then we'll come back, get into talking a little bit about how do we speak to Muslims, then go into this next lesson on suffering. Okay, see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. Bye now.